So in chapter 17, our first video cast did things on the common ion effect. These next couple of video casts will take a look at buffers. And this is section 17.2 in your textbook. So there are two ways to make a buffer solution. A buffer solution can either be a weak acid and its conjugate base, usually from a salt or an ionic compound that dissociates that provides the conjugate base in solution, or from a weak base and its conjugate acid. And a weak base could come from a salt dissociating and then giving you an anion that acts basic uh, and the conjugate acid could come from a salt as well, where the cation maybe acts as an acid and uh, is in common with the weak base. So there's lots of splitting up and identifying to determine which thing is a buffer solution. But bottom line, it turns out that a buffer is actually a common ion effect with an acid and a base. And one of them has to be weak. Okay the weak acid or the weak base has to be paired with its conjugate, has to be paired with its conjugate. And so knowing those definitions is one thing, but being able to identify them is another. And so that's the focus of most of this video, is for you to be able to identify whether something makes a buffer or not. So that's the game we're going to play right now called Buffer or Not. And so I'm going to list... Uh, the uh, uh, it, it, four examples in a row, and if we determine it's a buffer, then we'll write a reaction with HCl and with NaOH to show how the buffer would be able to react with both an acid and a base. Because bottom line, that's what a buffer does, is it makes it so the pH doesn't appreciably change when you add an acid or a base to the solution, a buffer buffs or causes the pH to remain fairly similar. And the reason it does it is because it has an acid and a base in it at the same time, or a base and an acid at the same time. So here's solution A, HNO3 and KNO3. Here's solution B, H2CO3 and NAHCO3. Here's solution C, C2H5COOH and KC2H5COO, K cuckoo, and NACN and HCN. And so we're going to answer three questions for each one of these. First of all, could this solution be a buffer or not? And then second of all, if it is a buffer, write a reaction of that buffer solution with HCl and NaOH. So these are assumed to all be aqueous solutions. So make sure that you know that they're dissolved in water. And then when they dissolve in water, if they're a strong electrolyte, make sure that you know you have to split them. And then you have to look at their ions to determine whether or not they can be a buffer solution. So let's start with letter D, since that's right here at the bottom. And then we'll work to a new page for uh, B, C, B, and A. So in letter D, we have NACN, which is a soluble salt, and so Na plus and CN minus would uh, be available. And you can know that uh, NACN is soluble from several different ways, but if you forgot the uh, solubility chart right here, remember that the alkali metal cations can always be soluble, and Na, of course, is in that group. So watch for these because these are super popular to be partnered with an anion. So then you know immediately, oh, those are soluble, split them up so I can look at the ions. And then I have to identify, is this species a weak or a strong acid? And I can tell right now it's not hyperhical high, honohical OH, 2 so 4 so it's definitely a weak acid. And does it have its conjugate base? And CN minus is the conjugate base of HCN, because if you take away this H, CN minus remains. And so I have a weak acid conjugate base pair, and so the answer is yes, it can be a buffer. 
Now, what does the Na do in solution? Well, remember, Na came from a strong base, NaOH, and so it will just spectate and do nothing in solution as far as pH is concerned. So now we can answer the second question, write a reaction with HCl and write a reaction with NaOH. And so the reaction with uh, HCl would be the basic portion of the buffer reacting with HCl. So of these BC that are dissolved in solution, when you're going to react it with an acid, pick the base part. And then the base part will accept a proton, and so it will be HCN. And what's left over after the acid is released as proton, Cl-. And you can see that this buffer solution would provide a base, so when HCl is added, the pH wouldn't appreciably change. And then uh, let's react it with NaOH, and with NaOH you'd choose the acid to react with it. And so HCN would react with NaOH, and then it would be like a, a, a neutralization reaction here, where H would go with the H with the OH, and then NaCN would form, which would be a soluble salt. And you can see that the NaOH would then be used up and turned into water, and therefore the solution would be buffered once again. So that's how a buffer solution works, is that it contains an acid and a base, although they're weak, but they can still neutralize when a strong acid or a strong base is added to the solution. So let's go back to uh, letter A now, and let's work through that one. And so let's look at the ions that are present here. So we have HNO3 and KNO3. And so I have an acid, HNO3, and that's one of the criteria to have a buffer. But wait, didn't it say that the acid needed to be a weak acid? Yeah, it needs to be a weak acid. And it also needs to be, the conjugate acid would have to be weak as well. This is not a weak acid. This is a strong acid. Oh, it does have its conjugate base present, but it's a conjugate of a strong. And so no, this would not be a buffer solution. Buffer solutions, remember, must be of a weak acid or base, a weak acid or a weak base, and it's conjugate acid and conjugate base. This has its conjugate, but it's a strong acid, so it cannot act as a buffer solution. Okay, letter B, let's take a look at these. We have H2CO3, which is a weak acid, because it's not hydrohycal high, honohycal low H2SO4, and it has a salt, and this salt has Na positive, which came from a strong base, so it's not going to do anything solution. And then it has HCO3. Now you'll notice HCO3 is a conjugate base of H2CO3, because if you lose one of these protons, now HCO3 is what's left over. So this is an acid, weak acid and its conjugate base. And so, yes, this is a buffer solution. So now let's go through and let's write the reaction with HCl and NaOH. So taking HCl, I would want to react that with my basic portion. And taking NaOH, I would want to react that with my acidic portion. So the first one that I wrote is with NaOH. So I took the acidic portion, and then I reacted that with NaOH. And then you'd swap the cations right here, and you'd get water and some NaHCl3, a soluble salt. Now let's react it with HCl. And so HCl this time would go with the weak base. HCl with the weak base. Swap the cations right here, or give the proton away here. And so I'd end up with H2CO3 and Cl-. So you can see that this buffer solution had a weak acid and its conjugate base. The last one, let's see if you can tell before I reveal it. Buffer or not. So if you look at this one, you'll notice that, oh, I think we're on letter C. I apologize. We're on letter C. Maybe you could tell that one right there. Okay, so here's an acid right here, HC2H5COOH. I think that's uh, propanoic acid because it's got three carbons in it, and then oic acid because it's got the double bond OOH at the end. 
and then it has K and the propanoate anion right here. And so K plus will make it be soluble because remember anything from the alkali metal cations is soluble. And of course K is in the alkali metal cations right here. And then I'll have this anion. And you'll notice that this is the conjugate base of this weak acid. And so yes, this would be a buffer solution. And when I write these, when I write these uh, equations, I would write the conjugate base to react with the HCl. So reacting with the HCl, this conjugate base would react with it. The H would swap over here, and we would end up with the H. C2H5COO, or you could put the H at the end because that's where it goes, you know, when it is a, uh, a, a Lewis electron dot structure. And then the Cl minus would be present right here. And uh, if there were a base added to it, NaOH, the NaOH would be added to the acid. And then we would swap the uh, H and the OH to get water. And then we would get the sodium to hang out with the C2H5COO and make a salt. In letter D, we've got uh, a weak acid, HCN. And if you split this up, you'll have CN minus. And so you'll have a conjugate base. And we already saw that one right over here. And so yes, that was another example of a buffer solution. So in this video cast, hopefully you learned uh, three things. First of all, number one, that a buffer is something that is composed of a weak acid or a weak base, and it's conjugate, conjugate acid or base. Number two, these conjugates usually come from a salt, a salt that has dissociated and given you either the cation or the anion that is the conjugate. And then number three, hopefully you learned that a buffer is something that causes little to no change in the pH of a solution because it has both an acid and a base present at the same time. And those are there to react when something that is a source of H plus or something that is a source of OH minus is added to this solution.